one of the most famous Prince moments actually came on the Chappelle show where uh, <laughs> they did the whole basketball game yeah. thing. And I actually interviewed Mickey Free uh, from Shalimar mm -hmm. who uh, was down with Prince during that time. Yeah. And it was actually there at the basketball game. Oh, damn. And uh, yeah, he said it went exactly like that. He actually said that Prince played like Michael Jordan. We're in our street clothes, bro. Remember, we just came from the club. Okay. So we're in our street clothes. So Prince said, give me the ball back. And I swear to you guys listening, wherever you're going to be, Prince took the ball and it was like Michael Jordan after that. <laughs> shot after shot, like pff, nothing but net. And I looked at Eddie and I was like, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. And after we were done, true story, Princess Cook at the time, her name was Randy, cooked us pancakes. <laughs> Blouses. Was Prince really that good at basketball? He was good, man. He was a good basketball player. Yeah. You know, little, agile, really quick, had decent jump shot. Yeah. Okay. So you leave Princess Camp and you start dropping solo albums. You did uh, Daydreaming. Yeah. In 1987. Yeah. How did that do? It did okay. Uh, the, the first one was Color of Success. And that one, you know, uh, went, went platinum. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and uh, Daydreaming, uh, it's, it's, it might have got gold, you know, something like that. But Okay, I mean, solid numbers. Yeah. yeah. Solid numbers. Yeah. But you ended up actually coming back. Uh, to Prince's camp and doing Pandemonium. Yeah. Why? Well, here's what happened. Again, now this was before the religion thing, because the religion thing happened later on. But um, he wants me to come to uh, Paisley Park, so we're going to cut a record. But uh, first of all, I, we had, uh, me and Freeze, uh, my bass player, Ricky Freeze, we write a lot together. We had submitted some songs to Prince to listen to, and he dug one of them. And so he took it, rewrote it, layered it, and called it Corporate World. And um, so we ended up, he wanted to do a whole record and call the, uh, the project Corporate World. So we did that. So we finished the record. Jerome was in on it, um, me and Prince again. Um, and uh, so we finish, and then all of a sudden, the movie Graffiti Bridge comes into the picture. So now we're going to do another movie. This is halfway through the Corporate World album. And Jimmy and Terry decided they wanted to be involved. So we pretty much scratched the whole Corporate World album and started new with Jimmy and Terry, and that's how we went into Jerk Out and all of that stuff. Right. And what's interesting about the Pandemonium album is that there's a song called the Donald Trump <laughs> Black Version. Yeah. Which I was listening to on the way here. <laughs> Very cool, ironic. It's a cool song, though. You know, <laughs> but we, in 2019, right. we get lost in translation a little right, bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Donald Trump was just a baller back then. He was a rich that's guy. All, that's how people were the were money man. Him. Yes. He was the money man. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So you guys come back, and you do you do the Pandemonium album, and then Jerk Out was the big single off of that. Yeah, and you do the whole mirror thing in the music video once again. You, you originally did it in Jungle Love. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess it was Jerome. Yeah. What was holding the mirror yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. How did that thing even come together? Well, that, that came together, um, the song Cool, uh, Somebody Bring Me a Mirror. Um, we had already been on tour. We were back rehearsing again, revamping the show at this little uh, rehearsal hall in South Minneapolis called the Yasm. I forget what that was, something backwards, I'm sure. But anyway, we're doing cool, and I'm like, somebody bring me a mirror. And Jerome just, you know, hopped up, ran into the bathroom, snatched the mirror off the wall, and then next thing I know, he's standing in front of me with the mirror. And all the guys were just kind of looking at each other like, this shit's pretty cool, man. So Jerome went from being, at that time, he was like our valet you know he did all the luggage and all that stuff so he, that was his introduction to the stage man he was he was in after that 